This is a quick demo of the Pathfinder BMS to show what kind of progress we've been doing. It looks a lot the same as the last time I showed it off, uh, but we've done a lot of work on the uh, firmware programming. Uh, right now I have this BMS connected to a 16 cell 280 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. Uh, the Pathfinder BMS comes with these um, adapter terminals with uh, uh, screw connections for your balance wires so you can use any kind of uh, wire for that. You don't have to have a special wiring harness. And this BMS auto detects the cell count when you plug it in. So uh, when I first plug it in and it boots up it's going to tell me that it's detected 16 cells. Make sure that's correct. And uh, if I had it connected to fewer cells it would uh, automatically detect the cell count and tell me. So uh, it says we've detected 16 cells of lithium iron phosphate. Is that correct? Yes. Now it'll continue booting up. Now you can see we have some indicator lights on. This is uh, charge and discharge. Uh, that just says awake and then there's a red light there for faults. If we had a temperature fault it would show up there. Uh, for example if I unplug the temperature probe, we'll get a low temperature fault right away and the outputs will shut off. You can view the alarms via the screen. Here we have two active alarms. That's reading under temp and discharge and under temp and charge. And if I put the temperature probe back, those should clear automatically. Now it says no alarms and the outputs have switched on again. So I'll go back and show off what you can do from this screen. Um, we still have the free Overkill Solar mobile app which works on Bluetooth and we have um, a new version of the USB app which works via the built-in USB-C connection. And the USB-C can also be used for firmware updates. Uh, on this main screen, uh, it's showing you the battery voltage and wattage and current. Uh, on the next screen, we can see state of charge. This also includes a state of charge confidence level. That is calculated by a special chip that we added um, from Texas Instruments. It's called a fuel gauge chip. That takes some very complicated uh, math and monitors the state of charge of uh, whatever type of lithium battery you have. As long as it's properly configured, it should give you a accurate state of charge and, uh, and the confidence level at all times. It does have uh, a learning cycle. We will be providing the, the baseline setup with the completed learning cycle for the types of batteries that we have available to test with. And so that should give you a, a good baseline for almost any battery that you will uh, be setting up. This screen also tells you uh, time to full and time to empty. That's based on the average current uh, over the uh, design capacity that you have set up. <clears throat> State of health um, is the measured capacity divided by the design capacity. It tells you what percent of your uh, theoretical capacity is available. Uh, this page shows you all the temperatures. Um, this displays the temperatures from the two external probes that you're going to attach to the battery cells. It also tells you the temperature of the MOSFET switching array and the internal temperatures of the of the um, BMS chips. The screen shows you all the active cell voltages in millivolts and it shows you the high and low cells in their delta. If there was fewer than 16 cells configured the screen would only show you the active cells. The next screen uh, is a diagnostic tool. It shows you all of the cell inputs, even if some of them aren't connected. Uh, that's going to be especially useful if you have uh, wiring faults or loose wires or corrosion on some of the uh, battery terminals or the bus bars. Then you would be able to, it'll actually highlight um, cells that have a fault. From this screen, you can also start a uh, test of the uh, balancer. So if I press OK, it's warning me that the outputs will switch off. I'm going to say OK. 
now that the balancer is active and I can scroll through different cells and the screen indicates that I'm balancing uh, cell number seven uh, and if you had wiring faults this would also load that cell connection and tell you uh, uh, and tell you what's going on there that'll be a, a good diagnostic tool and after a few seconds that test cancels and the output switch back on this screen shows you the battery voltage um, this is going to show you the the top of the cell stack and it's also going to show you the voltage of the output to the system uh, and it also um, measures um, the system voltage uh, for a load detect function when the outputs uh, switch on the raw current screen isn't finished um, but it displays all of the raw current measurements um, for the two different uh, BMS chips. Uh, the, the zero current hasn't been calibrated because I just reset this to the factory settings. Uh, there's the alarms page again. Uh, events count, event counts will list the number of times um, that alarms have been seen and the uh, number of resets and reboots. Session values tells you uh, minimum and maximum voltage and minimum maximum current and wattage. Uh, this just tells you the manufacture date and the name. This tells you the firmware version. Uh, the debug symbol indicates this is the, uh, an internal testing build which I uh, compiled yesterday. The Wi-Fi status screen will show you uh, what network you're connected to and what the signal strength is if you've connected to a Wi-Fi network and the uh, BLE or Bluetooth status screen will show you uh, it'll show the MAC address of the phone or tablet that's connected to it and the signal strength and moving on uh, this screen lets you manually control the the MOSFET outputs and it also shows you the status uh, so I can manually switch off the charge output like this and that'll switch off immediately and then I can turn it back on the same way. I can do the same thing with discharge and switch it back on and this also uh, displays the status of the external discharge switch circuit. Um, this allows you to connect a dry contact switch or relay for a, um, a low current battery shutoff switch. When you, uh, when you close this circuit uh, discharge will immediately shut off and it'll be indicated on the screen here. It's also indicated on the mobile app or the Bluetooth app. Moving on, most of these screens are not finished, but this is where you will configure the BMS. You've got capacity set up, balancer set up, uh, level one, two, and three protections. That's your uh, cell over voltage, under voltage, over temperature, all the way up to the uh, short circuit current limit and timing. You can uh, enable or disable temperature sensors. You can calibrate the current from this screen. On the next page, um, you have user interface settings. Uh, we have the Wi-Fi setup. This is where you can enter your SSID and password, and it'll tell you if it's connected or not. You can disable all of the radio power if you want. So that will completely shut off the power to the antenna and uh, not allow any uh, Wi-Fi or Bluetooth connections and uh, so if you want to turn that back on the only way to do that is to come back to the built-in screen. Uh, we got settings for over-the-air updates. This allows you to set uh, the uh, automatic updates always ask or never check for updates. Uh, as long as it's not set to never check, this periodically connects to our uh, GitHub and checks to see if there's a new update file available. It also gives you the option uh, to opt in to beta uh, versions of the new firmware. So we'll be releasing more frequent beta versions with new features. And then um, once those have been fully tested, then we'll, uh, we'll put out a new stable firmware release. 
you can also enter the UF2 update mode. This is how you update via the USB. So you would connect this to your uh, PC and download the UF2 format uh, firmware update. And then you just drag and drop it into the mass storage device. Uh, when, when you click OK here, this will um, reboot and it'll present a mass storage device on the PC. And when you drop the update file in, then the BMS will execute it and restart. Uh, you can also change temperature units here. And then there's reset options. Uh, there's one physical reset button that'll cycle the power and reset uh, all of the, the both BMS chips and the user interface. You can also do that uh, from this screen. You can do a normal reboot and then you can also do a total factory reset that will delete all of the parameters and um, calibrations so it'll restore it to the uh, fresh factory setting uh, as it was when it was manufactured. So that's all I have to show off right now. Um, in another video I'll show how the um, for more updates work and how to use the uh, USB monitoring application. I hope to have these up for pre-sale uh, by the end of the month, February 2025. Thanks for watching. Bye.